Are you worried about earthquakes and the danger they pose to you and your family? Well, if you live in California or Mexico, of course you're worried. In Mexico, for example, in September of 2017, they experienced in Mexico City a 7.1 magnitude earthquake, killing 370 people and injuring 6,000 people. In California, they have the famous San Andreas Fault, where the North American tectonic plates meet with the Pacific tectonic plates, and that's considered a fault. In that region, they have a great deal of seismic activity. For example, on May 8th of 2018, just a day ago as I'm filming this video, they experienced a 4.5 magnitude earthquake that shook a great deal of Southern California, including Los Angeles. Now, if you lived in Oklahoma, you weren't worried about earthquakes until about 2009. And up until 2009, Oklahoma had only about two earthquakes a year, and they were small, relatively small. Most people didn't even know they occurred. But what happened? Well, in 2015, Oklahoma skyrocketed from two earthquakes to 900 earthquakes. And then now I'm happy to say that that's decreased to about 300 plus earthquakes a year. And we'll get into why that's occurring. But it's interesting to note that Oklahoma is not sitting on any known fault. So, if you're worried about earthquakes, stay tuned. We're going to discuss how artificial intelligence may save you from an earthquake. I'm Lou Del Monte, the host of Savvy Life Strategies, where we post videos just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, why should you believe what I'm about to say about earthquakes? Well, it turns out I'm a physicist. And I'll put a link in the description regarding my background. I've worked in the high-tech field of integrated circuits, working on the United States' most sensitive weapons and communication satellites, and I've published four books on science, and I have a fifth book coming out this November. Now let's discuss how artificial intelligence may save you and your loved ones from an earthquake. First, let's discuss terminology so we have a common understanding. And I'll roll in an image that, that discusses the Richter scale. Now, you may ask, what is the Richter scale? Well, it was invented in 1935 by Charles Richter of the California Institute of Technology. And he was a mathematician in trying to understand how to categorize earthquakes. The Richter scale is used to rate the magnitude of an earthquake. And that is the amount of energy released during an earthquake. As you look at this image, you'll notice that there are digits and they go from one to 10. Now, when you go from a digit of say one, to a digit of two, the earthquake isn't twice as bad. It's actually 10 times worse. When you're looking at earthquakes in the magnitude of 2.5 or less, they're considered minor. They're not even felt, but they can be recorded. When an earthquake registers between 2.5 and 5.4 on the Richter scale, they're slight, they're felt, but there's only minor damage. Now, the 2.5 earthquakes, we get about 900,000 of those a year. That's 2.5 or less. On, from 2.5 to 5.4, we get about 30,000 of those a year. When we look at 5.6 to 6, that's considered a moderate earthquake. And there is slight damage to buildings and other structures. And there we see about 500 a year. 
from 6.1 to 6.9, those are considered strong earthquakes, and there's a lot of damage, including loss of life, and we get about 100 of those a year on a worldwide basis. When we talk about earthquakes between 7 and 7.9, those are major earthquakes with serious damage and loss of life, and we get about 20 of those a year. When we talk about earthquakes that are greater than 8, anywhere between 8 and 10, those are great earthquakes, and they can destroy an entire community. And fortunately, we only get about one of those every five to ten years. In the case of Mexico City, few experts were surprised by an earthquake because Mexico is a seismically active area, and they get about 40 earthquakes a year. Most of them are minor. Yet, Despite the number of earthquakes they get, seismologists, people who actually study earthquakes, cannot predict why or how and when they're going to occur. Well, what about Oklahoma? Now, that's a city or a state, I should say, that doesn't rest on a fault. Well, they think that the sudden increase in earthquakes was caused by the disposal of wastewater from the state's fracking industry. This caught seismologists off guard. Here you see a historically quake-free area being struck by earthquakes. Why is this surprising? Because most seismologists thought earthquakes had to do with faults, that is tectonic plates, one slipping over the other. And as they slip, they cause a the earth to move and shake, causing a wave, essentially a wave of a certain amplitude to be transmitted through the ground. Now, earthquakes have been somewhat of a mystery as far as predicting when they were going to occur. But Thibault Parole and his colleagues at Harvard University started to look at and use artificial intelligence to try to predict when an earthquake, earthquake would occur. Well, first, they published a paper in a, a journal called Science, Science Advances, and this was published just recently. And what they did is they looked at using artificial intelligence to detect earthquakes. And doing this by using artificial intelligence linked up to seismographs, they were able to detect earthquakes 17 times more than all other methods. And they made these detections in a fraction of the time that it took older methods to do that. Now you may ask, how do you use artificial intelligence to detect, detect an earthquake? The method they used was similar to how Siri and Alexa work. Now you're probably familiar with Siri. Most people have an iPhone, a lot of people do. And they have a application called Siri and you can talk to your phone and give it instructions. The same thing is true of Alexa, which is Amazon's product. What both Siri and Alexa have to do is they have to screen out the background noise and listen for your voice commands. Well, this is the technique that Dr. Parole and his colleagues used to train a neural network computer. Now, what's that, a neural network computer? Well, that's a computer that's modeled after the human brain and typically is able to learn. So what did they do? They fed this computer background noise from seismic noise, from the, uh, a dead area such as Wisconsin, which is seismically very quiet. So it's called dead from a seismic viewpoint. And so the seismic rumblings of the earth from that area represent the background. Then with that, they were able to allow the computer, this neural network computer, pick out earthquakes that were above the background noise. With this technique, they were able to actually detect earthquakes that were one, zero, and even minus one. Now humans would not have noticed this from the ambient background. 
However, the artificial intelligence of a neural network computer was able to pick them out. This work has been praised by the United States Geological Survey Group as being compelling and novel. Now, they're not just trying to quantify earthquakes. What they're trying to do is use predictors that a quake is coming. So, for example, if there are a series of small earthquakes where there are small movements in the tectonic plates or a small disturbance, well below the ground, then they're picking up these disturbances as a precursor to an earthquake. This is not a proven method yet. The entire seismic community, uh, seismologists, are not in agreement that this is a good method to predict earthquakes. However, it's promising. We now have something where we're using artificial intelligence to look at these small tremors as a precursor to what could be a killer quake. I'm encouraged by this research and I applaud that it's going forward. Imagine if we're able to predict a killer earthquake, how many lives we could save. Much the same as predicting, say, hurricanes. People take precautions and we could do the same thing with earth earthquakes. Now, I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to put a few links below in the description and give you an opportunity to read those, uh, those links and those articles and to formulate your own opinion about this. Uh, feel free to comment. If you found this video informative, I invite you to subscribe. Give it a thumbs up so other people know it's a valuable video and click that notification bell so you'll get more videos just like this as soon as they're published. Until we have a chance to talk again, stay savvy and live well.